Church, we have a few announcements this morning. Uh, first of all, uh, next next Friday, or on Friday, uh, August 14th at 9 a.m., at First Assembly of God, there's going to be a food truck that's going to be there with refrigerated foods, uh, milks, uh, dairy products, meats, and so forth. So if, uh, if you would like to go, and then we'll be giving away the food um, until it's gone. They did this a few weeks ago. And my understanding is there was a big line of people, so you might want to get there a little bit early. But uh, and it typically lasts about two hours. So again, uh, what a blessing. So if you, uh, if you know someone, please share that, that they can benefit from it. Or if you'd like to go and help and uh, help hand the food out, I'm sure that they can use some, uh, some help as well. So that's First Assembly of God on Friday, August 14th at 9 a.m. And also on Sunday, the the uh, 23rd at 5 p.m. is going to be a prayer walk at all of our schools, the church, and we, need, we definitely need to go and be a part of that this year. Um, now the, the, the campuses will be open so that we can walk around the, uh, I guess the sidewalks and the hallways and, and things like that, but we will not be able to go inside the schools like we've been able to do in the past. But again, guess what, church? I mean, we can, we can, we can walk that campus and we can, we can pray God, God will hear those prayers and he can bless that campus and every step that we take, I believe that God can, can put an imprint on that school and those students get their own on the hand of protection and a sense of his presence as well. Uh, so also, we will also will be, a, be a blessing to the students and uh, so we, we want to give away, uh, give uh, backpacks that's going to be filled with school supplies. So, we're going to need those school supplies by a week from today, next Sunday. So please, uh, so please, uh, uh, if you can, uh, pick up a few 
you see the surprise and bring you know, so that we can we can pray for that life and bless some of our kids. Amen. Amen. This time I want to uh, give you guys the opportunity to worship and, and giving our tithes and offerings. And I wanted just to share a thought and the more I, the more I got into this, the, the deeper God kept taking me. And uh, but but it is something that God really, I, I think, speaks to, to me all the time. Um, and that's, I think we as Christians, we live beneath our privileges. Amen? I think we, we live beneath our privileges, and we need to recognize who we are when we're a child of God. Amen? And I may go up kind of around the big circle, but if you guys are there with me, I'll get to where I believe God wants me to go and share with you. But, you know, I think one of the things that Sometimes that we as Christians that we struggle with is we grasp the spiritual things. And I remember, and you know, see, let me tell you, I've got a pretty good memory, but uh, I, I can remember as an early Christian, I remember praying one time and uh, asked the Lord, the Lord opened my eyes to the spiritual things around me. And God, I believe, spoke to me and said, no, I don't think you can handle it. Amen. And so those are some of the things that as we read God's word, we understand that there is a deeper spiritual uh, things that's actually actually happening. And, and sometimes it's even difficult for us to grasp eternity, right? It is. And uh, but the way that we can look at it is that eternity is never ending, never ending. I also heard this this uh, spoken as a as an illustration of, of, of how long eternity is. And, you know, Cindy and I, we have a little hummingbird feeding on our back on our back porch of our house. We love to sit there and watch the hummingbirds. And they're about as big as the end of your thumb. And uh, they'll come and they'll, they'll get a little drink and they're flying off. And of course, they fly a little bit, but uh, a lot of the other hummingbirds are off and the dominant ones. But they're small birds. I heard this, and I'll never forget whenever I heard it. Someone, someone actually spoke and said this in, in, in a message that. If a hummingbird, as small as they are, was to fly to the Atlantic Ocean, get one drop of water, and then fly to the Pacific Ocean and deposit that drop of water, and continue to do that until the Atlantic Ocean was dry, eternity would have just begun. Amen? So again, think about this. Eternity is never ending. You know, but what, is, what does God really want? from us as Christians. I think what he wants us to do is he wants us to allow him to be the Lord of our lives. Amen. He wants us to have faith in him, to have trust in him, and depend upon him, and understand that he supplies all of our needs according to his riches in glory. Not necessarily our wants, but our needs that he will supply. Amen. Amen. So again, by, by yielding to him, and allowing him because throughout scripture you know we see that where God desires to fight our battles for us so that we don't have to fight our battles so, you know, but sometimes we just desire to, 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 hey I'm going to go fight this battle myself and most of the time that doesn't work out too well you know? so whenever we depend upon him and have trust in him you know that's what God really desires he wants to be the Lord of our lives amen so I want to share this with you. This is really where the Lord was taking me. This and, and, and uh, do we consider ourselves saints? Yeah, I think the Bible clearly tells us that. You know, that whenever we are, are saved by the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whenever we're saved by the grace of God, that we become a saint. I think there's a couple of things that happen. First of all. Whenever we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, whenever we accept the gift of salvation, we're born again. The Bible tells us that we're born again. I also believe that at that very moment is when our name is recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen? And whenever that happens, then we should start thinking about, thinking a little bit differently. And yes, we're Christian. Yes, we were born again. But you know what? God calls us saints. Amen? That's what God calls us, and He calls us saints. You know, and even in the book of Psalms, in Psalms 116 and verse number 15, the Bible says this. It says, Precious is precious in the eyes of the Lord 
is in definite seconds. Mm -hmm. Now God is looking forward to that day when we're going to be united with Him face to face. Amen. And uh, so again, uh, you know, we're saints. We're saints of God. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 1, listen to this church, and this is this is what really kind of you know, jumped out at me. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus. So Paul's writing this to the, to the church at Ephesus, but it's Paul was writing a letter to us here in Perry, Florida, to, be to the saints of the church in Perry, Florida. Amen. We're saints, church. We're saints. We're the saints of God. And to the faithful in Jesus Christ, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So what does he say? What is the, the, the gift? The gift is, 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 is peace and it's grace. Peace and grace from God. But verse number three is what really, where, where I really want to go. And it says this. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Church, when we slow down a few minutes and we read that, what does it say? It says, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. It's already done. And I begin to think about that. And one of the things that, that and I, I do all the time, and you, know, you probably do as well, is Lord bless me. But guess what? His answer is, I've already done it. I've already done it. I've already done it. That's what he's saying right here to the church in Ephesus. He said, I have, I have, he said, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings through heaven. Amen. So church, we are blessed. And you know, church, that's that's the thing. I think that, that as I was thinking about this as as uh, you know, instead of talking about living you know, beneath our privileges, I believe it's because we just don't recognize the blessings that God has already given to us. Amen. And if we, as we take our time and begin to block the things of the world out and have that time with the Lord and let Him speak to us, and these are the things that I think that we can reveal to. God wants us to have life on this, on this earth and have life more abundantly. But we also need to understand that life is really just a vapor. And in, in uh, James chapter 4 and verse 13, it said, let me just turn back to that and read that. But James, <coughs> I'll let you read it. Chapter 4, verses 13 and 14, it says this. It said, you know, basically it's speaking to us that life is just a vapor. It's here today and it's gone tomorrow. So church, let's, let's take it. Let's, let's Allow the Lord, let's allow God to be the Lord of our lives. And then we do it so let's let Him fight our battles for us. And let's begin to recognize all the spiritual blessings that He has given to us. And that's the rest of the Savior of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer and just pray that uh, God's blessing will only be upon the servant. Pray that God will bless our offering and our tithes today. Father, we thank you. God, for the opportunity that you've given to us to come to worship today. Father, we thank you for the gift of salvation. And Father, we thank you for allowing us to be saints. And Lord, we understand what that is and the gift that you've given to us. And Father, today, God, we just pray. Lord, I pray that each one of us, that we would desire to know you greater. And I pray that we would have a desire to, to develop that relationship with you, to understand who you are through your word. And understanding the God that you are, which is a God of love, a God of unconditional love, who gave his son Jesus Christ so that, so that we could enjoy the gift of salvation and forever and for all eternity live with you in the kingdom of heaven. And Father, today, God, we just said we continue to worship. God, we just pray that, that you would be with us, that, that God, that you would anoint every word that we speak and God, every song that we sing. That we would do it for your kingdom and for your glory. And Father, as we prepare to worship you and give you our tithes and offerings, Father, we just want to obey your word. And God, as we, as we bring our offerings to you and our gift to you, Lord, we just pray that you would bless it. God, that you would just bless it. And that God, that you would bless the giver. And Father, that you would use this offering for your kingdom and for your glory as you see today. Father, we bless you.
London, or would you just say you turn to do it where you get from y'all? <laughs>
Spirit's here this morning. Can we just lift up our hands and our hearts just to worship Him this morning? Father, we love you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to do your work in this place and in our lives, Father. We just thank you. Lord, we just love you this morning, Lord. We thank you for your sweet spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing that destroys every good. Lord, we thank you this morning for your presence, for your promises. Lord, we're thankful. We're thankful, Lord. We're thankful. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to do your work in our lives. Only through you, God. Only through you. Father, we welcome you this morning. We praise you this morning. We worship you. For you are worthy of all of our praise, all of our adoration, all of our worship. You are worthy, God. You are worthy. We bless your holy, your wonderful name. We bless you. Lord, in this atmosphere of worship, Lord, we lift up our needs to you this morning. Lord, we know there are many, Father. We just pray, Lord, for every family, for every friend. Lord, we just pray for your touch. We pray for your healing, Lord, for those. Lord, that are infected with this virus. Lord, we pray for your touch. Lord, we pray for your healing for those that are affected with any disease or hurt this morning, God. We pray for your healing, Lord. We pray for cancer this morning. Lord, we pray for those that are suffering this morning, God. We pray for your touch, for your healing touch. We stand with your promise. Lord, for those that are weak this morning, we know that they are made strong through you. Father, we pray, Lord, for your people, that you would touch and minister to every need. Every need, Lord. We know there's nothing too hard for you. We know that you are the present in the time of our trouble. Your word says to cast our care upon you, for you care for us. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you hear us when we pray. That we can come boldly to the throne of your grace. Bring our petitions before you. Father, we just thank you for your blessings. Lord, your blessings are so many we cannot even count. We're thankful for those. Let us never take those for granted. Father, we're thankful, Lord, that you hear us when we pray. We're thankful, Lord, for answered prayer. We're thankful, Lord, that you are a loving God that loves us with an everlasting love. We're thankful for that this morning. Spirit of God, surround us. Change the atmosphere. We love you this morning. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Amen. 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 Look at somebody and tell them the Lord hears us. When we pray. Amen. Anybody believe that this morning? Amen. Thank you, worship team. Then they do an awesome job this morning. Amen. Amen. Always, that's right. Awesome. It's good to break out one of them songs in the hymn book. Amen. That was awesome. Um, I forgot how to play that church beat on most that. <laughs> but at least I call it a church beat, that one, two church beat. Amen. We, 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 we used to do that all the time, especially growing up. When I was a kid and just learning how to play the drums, they said, 
David, all you have, they call me DJ, all you have to do is learn two beats. And here's one of them. And that's 90% of it right there. And so uh, to go back to that, brings back memory. memories. Amen. God is good. Amen. You know, I know that there's uh, many this morning that would like to be here. I know Wendy's down and seeing the, the granddaughters before uh, her, uh, uh, she starts, school starts and all of that chaos, amen, of the school, regular school year, not even counting uh, coronavirus and all of that. Uh, so she went down to spend some time with the, the girls. I'll be back today, praise God. Uh, yeah. Um, and so, uh, but I know there's many that are, some are out of town and some are sick. I know Sister Weed is uh, staying away. There's a coronavirus in her family, so I know she's kind of isolated, quarantined uh, from people. Um, and, you know, this thing just spreading, 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 spreading. There's so many uh, pastor friends of mine that uh, um, have it or have just fallen through it and over it. Um, and they say it's no joke. It's not nothing to play with. It. They, you don't want it, amen? And I know I don't want it. So stay safe out there, amen? Um, just heard last night that the pastor over at East Point uh, has it now. So um, it's just Central Florida, North, North Florida, South Florida. It, it don't matter where you're at, amen? But we know that God is in control. And now we know he's in control. So we're thankful for that. Also, a couple friends of ours down in Central Florida, actually one friend that I know of, they just put on a ventilator last night, yesterday. Um, he's a little bit older and has some, some health issues in the past. And so we're going to continue to pray for him. His name's Mike. Um, but we're, we're believing the Lord to, to touch him and to help him. Um, we're going to... Uh, Go to the word of the Lord this morning in the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus. We're going to go back, way back. Amen. Uh, for the last four weeks, we've uh, talked about Psalm 23. And I don't know about you, but I got I got a lot out of that. Amen. You know, I, I believe the Lord don't just give me those words for you. He gives me those words for me. Amen. Amen. And so I, I learned a lot and really, uh, really... Uh, got a lot of, out of those messages, and I'm thankful for the Lord for for taking us there and helping us to uh, to do that. But this morning, He uh, laid this on my heart. Uh, the story, very familiar story that we're we're probably all aware of in Exodus chapter 14. Um, gonna gonna read it. It's gonna be uh, several verses, so hang out, hang with me. Uh, for just a few verses, and then uh, and then I'll let you rest uh, for the rest of the service. How about that? I'll stand and you can sit. So if you would, when you find a place, would you stand with me, if you can, just for a few moments as we read this together. We're going to start in verse number 1 of Exodus chapter 14. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they turn and camp before Pi, the high road between Migdal and the sea, opposite Baal's left arm, and shall camp before it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are bewildered by the land, the wilderness has closed them in, then I will harden Pharaoh's heart, so that he will pursue them, and I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army, and the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Now it was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people, and they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his people with them. Also he took 600 choice chariots, and all the chariots of Egypt with the captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, 
And he pursued the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with boldness. So the Egyptians pursued them. All the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army, and overtook them camping by the sea beside Hypahiroth before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, because, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you. You shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. This morning, I want to talk to us. I, I feel like the Lord has a message for us this morning. And, and that message is, I'm not going back. Amen. I'm not going back. Would you pray with me for the next uh that the Lord will just bless us for the next few moments, that his anointing and his message will come forth in power. Father, we love you this morning. Lord, we praise you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that, Lord, you are a God of love. You are a God of war. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and all that you're going to do. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you fight our battles. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you lead us and you guide us and that you are with us always. Father, I pray, Lord, for the next few moments. Lord, I pray, God, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that we just prayed about, that his presence would surround us, that this presence would fill this room, Lord, that you would touch us, help us, speak to us, encourage us, challenge us, Lord, to be what you would have us to be this morning. Lord, that we would not leave this place the same that we came, in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray, God, that you would touch us and help us in a mighty way this morning. And Father, we just give you praise, honor, and glory for all that you do and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Look at somebody while you're being seated. Tell them, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. If you're watching us on the live stream this morning, tell somebody in your living room, I'm not going back. Amen? I'm not going back. Verse 11. Then they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away into the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us out to Egypt? Is this not the word we told you in Egypt? Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptian. For it would have better, it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. You know, here in this story, I, I, I honestly have a lot to say. I almost broke this up into two weeks and still may as the Lord directs us. But picture this just for a few minutes. And put, put ourselves into the shoes or the sandals of the children of Israel. Understand that they were slaves for 400 years. Amen. For 400 years, 
From the time, of course, we know the story of Joseph and, and how he was, you know, he went to the pit, he went to Potiphar's house, and he went to prison, but then he went to the palace, and he was basically second in charge, right behind Pharaoh, and he, they really saved the people, he saved Egypt, uh, and, 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 and basically, just to make a long story short, his brothers came back, and this is his words, I was, I was put in this position to save you, to save my family. Many years ago, you you know what? It's kind of like this. What the enemy meant for bad, God meant for good. The enemy went to try to destroy me. You know, using his brothers, the enemy went to try to destroy me. But the dreams that he had about the, 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 the haystacks bowing down to him and the stars bowing down, bowing down to him, and the moon and, and the sun bowing bow down to him. These dreams that he had was coming true when his brothers bowed down to him as he was the second uh, in charge of all of Egypt. But that was all forgotten when Pharaoh died. And, and, and you know, as the progression goes, and, and, and you know, his son, and then his son became king. And they forgot about Joseph. They forgot about the contribution that Joseph did, that his family. And they forgot. So what they did was the children of Israel that was now there, they multiplied, and they multiplied as, you know, as us good Christians do, right? We multiplied. And so they multiplied, and the children of Israel multiplied, and the king of Egypt looked at them and said, wow, they're getting very numerous, that there's so many of them, they can take us over, they can overthrow us. So they came up with an idea that they were going to make them slaves, and that's what happened. And so for 400 years, the children of Israel served Egypt as slaves. Think about that. 400 years. Then we know that Moses came on the scene. And we know the story of Moses again as, as a baby. You know, they were killing all of the babies. And his mother hid him in a, in a, a bushel, if you want to call it that, a folding bushel, folding bassinet, whatever you want to call it. And, of course, we know Pharaoh's daughter found him, raised him uh, as her own, and then we understand that, that he killed, uh, you know, an Egyptian, he, and, and he ran, he fled for his life, and he was just minding his own business on the backside of the desert. And here comes his old burning bush, and said, go back and tell Pharaoh, to let my people go. Anybody remember that story? Amen. You can go back and read it. Good stories. Go back and read the details of all of that. <laughs> so that's what Moses did. He obeyed the Lord. Now we understand, just as we do many times, Moses came up with different excuses. I'm not qualified. Well, I have a stutter. I can't speak. But you know, God has an answer for all of our excuses. Come on. This ain't even in my notes. This is just for you. He has, a, he has an answer for all of our excuses. All of our excuses. And so we understand that here Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he followed the leading of the Lord. We're going to talk about that in a second. But here they are. Probably, theologians think probably about a week or so after leaving Egypt. Here they are, basically with their first obstacle. Here they are with probably a week, maybe call it two weeks, a couple weeks of freedom. They don't have to build the, the uh, pyramids anymore. They don't have to do the, the building. They don't have to do the slave labor that they were doing for 400 years. They were free. And they find themselves, probably about a week or so later, they find themselves that in front what's called the Red Sea. And with the Red Sea in front of them, 
Now in that in that region and where they were at at that time, there was mountains on the right, mountains on the left. You know, it it's kind of varies, but most theologians, if you want to call it that, Bible scholars, believe that there was probably about two million people. So I've heard some up to six million. So you can figure anywhere from two to six million people, probably somewhere in that area, but let's just call it two. Two million people that Moses is leading. Talk about a caravan, right? Talk about a big camp. Talk about a lot of mouths to feed, right? And they're camped here right by the Red Sea. Again, the Red Sea's in front of them. Mountains on the right, mountains on the left. And right now, the only road that's left is to go back. But guess what? God hardens Pharaoh's heart. That now Pharaoh says, why did we let our slave labor go? Why did we let our free labor go? How are we going to get things done now? And he asks himself, you know, somebody can answer the question, well, God just sent 10 plagues, hello. Your firstborn son just died, hello. That's why. But God hardened his heart and he said, why did we let them go? Get the army. Get my finest chariots. Get my finest soldiers. We're getting them and we're taking them back. And so now, the children of Israel Mountains on both sides, Red Sea in front of them. There was a path to go back, but now here comes the army. You can probably imagine, as we probably have seen maybe in the movie, big dust storm coming up behind them. And they're like, what's that? Is that a storm? And maybe they sent a couple scouts or a couple people. Maybe one or two people went up the mountain to kind of look to get a better view. And they're like, no, nope, that's no storm. That's Pharaoh. Pharaoh's coming. And he's coming with his chariots. He's coming with his whole army. You can read it again. <laughs> Pharaoh came with his whole army. The entire army of Egypt. Chariots. Spears. <coughs> weapons. Fighters. They're coming to take the children of Israel back to slavery. That was their intention anyways. And so the people, as I read to you this morning, they see what's coming and they turn on the leader, they turn on Moses and they say, hey, wouldn't it be better for us to, to, to serve Egypt instead of die <clears throat> in this wilderness. Basically, they're saying, wouldn't it be better for us to be slaves than to be free? You know, the children of Israel already forgot that God just sent ten, you can say what you want, but ten miracles of plagues. They were miracles. It's not something that just happened. God sent them. Turning the water to blood. He sent frogs. He sent lice. He sent flies. He sent livestock pestilence. He sent boils on their body. He sent hail. He sent locusts. He sent darkness. And we know that he sent the death angel to kill the first point of Everything in the land of Egypt that didn't have the, the blood over the doorpost. And understand, we you can go back and read it again, that when the children of Israel left, they left with their pockets full. Amen. That's right. That the people of Egypt gave them gold and silver and, and valuables, and they filled their pockets and said, please go. Right? Can you imagine? Just go. 
What short memories? What short memories? It's kind of like what Brother John was talking about this morning. How many times do we run into a situation in our own life? And we have a short memory of the blessings of God that we already are, are receiving. We have short memories of what God has already done for us. But we have short memories of, God, why aren't you doing it now? God, why aren't you doing it the way I want you to do it now? God, why aren't you blessing me the way I want to be blessed now? Come on, somebody. Yeah. We as Christians many times have this, the, you know, we, we can go back and we can look at, at the children of Israel and, and we can say, I can't believe they did that. I can't believe they, you know, I can't believe they turned on their leader. I can't believe that they forgot what God did for them. But many times as Christians, we do the same thing. Come on. We do the same thing. We have short memories many times about what God has done for us, the miracles that God has done for us. You know, I could probably spend the next, uh, all the time we have for, for today and next week and next week and next week just telling you about the blessings of God in my life, throughout my life. And the miracle of God throughout my life and, and my family's life. Amen? Count our many blessings. Amen? But many times because we, we don't, we're, our prayer is not being answered in the time that we think it should be answered, we start to blame God. We start to say, God, if you don't do it, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, you know, and all of a sudden our past life starts to look a little bit better, don't it? Oh, wow. <clears throat> that life of sin looks shiny. That life of sin looks enticing. That's what the enemy does, amen. But they already forgot. They had short memories. And as believers, we are sometimes brought to a place in our own lives that we must learn to depend on God daily. This is a daily journey, church, amen? And we must resist the temptation of, of fondly reminiscing about our former life. That we lived in sin. You know, I'm telling you, the Bible says that sin is pleasurable. It is. But a lot of people forget that part, the last next part where it says, but it's only for a season. It's not going to last forever. Come on. As Brother John talked about eternity, there's something good that will last for eternity. But sin, yeah, that the consequence of that sin will last for eternity, but that pleasure won't. Because along with that pleasure, on the other side of the coin, is going to be consequence. And they and they don't tell you, the devil don't want to tell you the consequence. He just wants to show you the shiny part. Come on. He just wants to show you the pleasurable part. And many times in our life, we forget what God is doing or what, has, what God has done in our life. And, and sometimes, especially... And, and with new Christians, they start to look back at the shiny part, at the pleasurable part. Oh, well, that was a lot of fun. Come on, somebody. But the devil don't show them the consequence of that fun. You know, Romans chapter 6, verse 6 and 7 tells us, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he has died. For he who has died has been freed from sin. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that I'm free. I'm thankful that I'm free. Why? And I know it happens probably every day. But why would people want to go back to slavery when they're free? And that's what the children of Israel were, were thinking. Huh? <laughs> slavery in Egypt is better than freedom here. Come on. And that's what the devil tries to entice people with. All, and he's going to entice even more. Because let me tell you something. The scary part about it 
and, I, and I'll probably preach about this pretty soon, is that in the last days, it's the Bible says there will be a great falling away from the church. From the church. And so what does that mean, Pastor? That means that people that are grounded in church, people that are in church, people that attend church, at some point in the last days, they're going to go back to slavery. Maybe they're at a Red Sea uh, experience. Maybe they're, they're, they're in the middle of a, a, a storm or whatever, and they say, I, I don't want this no more. I'm going to, instead of being free, I'm going to go back to being a slave. <coughs> it don't make no sense. But it happens every day. I can name you, I'm not going to do it, but I can name, name, name you names of people that I have known in, in, in ministry that have been pastors, worship leaders, singers, leaders, youth pastors, youth leaders, all of these kinds of people that went back to being slaves. And they were grounded. They were serving God. And in my own mind, it doesn't make sense to me. But they decided to not be free anymore. And even today, they're serving the master of sin. And they are slaves to that sin. And we pray that, that they, they open up their eyes and they come back to being free. Amen? That's what the devil does. He entices. But I'm here to tell you this morning. I choose freedom over slavery. Every day, any day, Every day and twice on Sunday. Come on. Y'all with me this morning. I choose freedom over slavery. Yeah, the, the enemy tries to make it look shiny, makes it look, 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 look pleasurable, look fun, and all these kind of things. But I'm telling you, I had more fun as a Christian than I did back then. I haven't missed anything. Y'all with me? I said, I haven't missed anything. Come on. <clears throat> miracle after miracle, God performed on behalf of his people. Finally leading them out of slavery, away from the cruel hand of the Egyptians. He set them free. He set them free from oppression. He set them free from captivity. He set them free from bondage. When Pharaoh let the people go, God didn't lead them on the road that made the most sense. If you go back to Exodus 11, I'm sorry, Exodus 13, one chapter back, the Bible tells us that though the path was shorter through the Philistine country that God said, if they faced war, they might change their mind and return to Egypt. Verse number 17 of chapter 13. So he led them around the desert road over towards the Red Sea. Boy, there's a good lesson in there. The road to the land of milk and honey, the promised land, there was a shorter route Kind of, kind of, I, I kind of think of it like this. Right down that aisle and through those doors was the promised land. But in order to get to the doors, you had to go through the Philistine country. Brother John, he's a Philistine right there. He might be Goliath, I'm not sure. <coughs> but there was Philistines. Y'all know Goliath was a Philistine, right? Amen. Philistines, a fighting people. Now I want you to remember that the children of Israel were slaves. They weren't warriors. They weren't fighters. They probably didn't even have weapons when they left. Unless somebody gave them one. They weren't fighters. But the road was shorter. But God sent them, think about it, around the sanctuary, once, twice, up that aisle, down that aisle, around, right? Y'all with me? God sent them the long way around 
to get through the doors for the land of, that was filled with milk and honey, the promised land. Now, in our own mind, we're like, we should go the short way, right? I want to get the short line at McDonald's. You know, there's two lines. I'm going to get the short one, not the long one, right? And so we wonder many times, God, why are you sending me this way? And in our own minds, we're like, hey, I can get to it this way. But I'm telling you that God knows best. Because he knew that if the children of Israel went the short way through the land of Philistine, that they would have war, they would have battle, and they weren't ready for that. <clears throat> and what do you think they would do? Moses, why did you bring us this way? I'm ready to go back. Woo, that's good preaching. Because how many times as Christians do we struggle, we go through the storm? How many times as Christians, or do we know some Christians that have gone through storms and have gone through problems and have gone through stuff and they have given up? Because they didn't trust in the Lord. When, especially when the Lord was saying, no, don't do that, don't go that way. But they decided, well, you know what? I think I'm strong enough. I'm going to go that way. And what do they do? Fall. And what do they do? They don't give back up. They go back. How many times when the struggle becomes real do people say, I'm going back to Egypt. I can't deal with this. I can't deal with the battles. I can't even tell you how many times I've heard this one. It's too hard to be a Christian. So I'm just going back. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to be a Christian when you're not trusting in God. I I'm here to tell you, camera, it's hard to be a Christian when you try to do it on your own. And you don't Use the power of Christ. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. It doesn't say, I can do all things through the power of David that strengthens me. Because the power of David is nothing. But I can do all things through Christ. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. He that is within me is greater than he that is within this world. It's not our power, it's his power. Working in us and working through us. But God said, no Moses, don't go that way because that's a way of war. And they just not ready. And if they go that way, they're going to want to turn back. See, God knows. God knows. So if, if here's a good lesson for us. So if we feel like we're going the long way around, and God is leading us the long way around, just enjoy the scene of crowd. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I need to learn that. Because, you know, I'm a, I'm a highway person. I'm okay to jump on 75 or I-10 or, or I-4 or whatever and, and just get there. Wendy, she's a back row person. She likes to see the crowd. She, she, she likes to go to all the way down the coast kind of thing. You know, we went to Panama City a couple weeks ago. I said, should we go on I-10? No, I want to go to see the crowd down 98. And she, I said, well, that's going to take one. I don't care. I want to see the, the scenes. Seen it. I said, okay, you're driving. <laughs> Come on. And the same thing is true in our spiritual life. God may want to take us through the scenic route. Sit back and enjoy. Amen. I'm glad we went down 98. I enjoyed going that way. It was it was very pretty in most parts. It was nice, peaceful. Enjoy the scenic route. Come on, somebody. 
Because if we go the fast way, if we go the straight way, there may be more battles that maybe we're not quite ready to fight yet. Y'all with me this morning? But can you hear the grumbling starting already? Could you feel the fear rising as the Israelites got closer to the Red Sea? That sea probably looked bigger and bigger and bigger. And they're probably thinking to, to them or maybe saying, talking among themselves and saying, hey, we take a wrong turn somewhere. I don't see no bridge over this. They didn't have Pharaoh coming yet. And here they're, they're mountain, mountain, sea. How are we going to get across here? Did we bring a boat? Is there a raft? How are we going to get across here? As they got closer and closer and closer, and they got right on the Red Sea, you can imagine how this obstacle seemed too large for them, too difficult to overcome. And their eyes became focused. Now, remember, Pharaoh's not even coming yet. But their eyes became focused on the problem more than the problem solved. How are we going to get across here? What's the plan? Moses, you got a plan? Maybe we're going to do a rope swing around here, two million of us? How are we going to get across? Their eyes focused on the problem of the sea, forgetting the miracles that God just did to set them free, forgetting how big their God is. Again, this demonstrates how often and how quickly we forget what God has done and what he shows us. It's easy to quickly move from walking in the spirit to walking in the flesh because we start focusing on the problem, not the promise. You know, the Bible tells us that we live in the spirit, we walk in the spirit, that every day we got to kill our flesh. But how easy is it for us living in, in everyday life struggle, life daily struggle, that we can get out of the spirit and get to the flesh. Amen. Come on, somebody. Somebody can cut us off. Somebody could take too long getting our McDonald's order ready. Somebody could mess up our Popeye's order. Come on, somebody. That's fighting words. And we get out of the spirit into the flesh. The waitress may mess up our order. And, 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 you know, we kind of forget about grace and mercy. You know, we want it now. And we get out of the spirit. And we get into the flesh. The same thing is true in our storms. We may be trusting God and we may be living and walking in the spirit. But sometimes when we feel like life is, is, is overwhelming, sometimes we feel like, like life is... It's just throwing us curveball after curveball after curveball. We get out of the spirit. We stop looking to God. And we start focusing on the problem. And we get into the flesh and say, how can I fix it myself? How can I fix it myself? Instead of allowing God and trusting God Knowing, now listen, I want you to go back and, and, and go back and read the, the first few verses of verse uh, of chapter 14. Before they even got to the sea, God spoke to Moses and he said, I'm going to show Egypt who's boss. He said, I'm going to receive glory. I want you to go there. The, the, where they went didn't surprise God. Because God left them there. And what happened after that didn't surprise God because God had a plan for it all. He had a great miracle in the works that nobody even probably expected. I mean, did anybody expect the Red Sea to part? 
Did Moses? Did the children of Israel? Nobody expected it, but God had a plan. They catch him by surprise, and then he he led them there. He knew the reaction. He knew how they would act if they went the straight way, the short way. That's why he took them the long way. He knew the reaction when they felt like they was going to be surrounded. He knew. He knew Pharaoh was going to come. He knew. And he told Moses before any of this happened, go back and read it again, I read it to you. Before it all happened, he told Moses, I'm going to receive the glory and all of Egypt will know who I am, that I am God. What a good word. I'm going to tell you this morning, I have so much more to tell you. But I feel like I, I don't want to keep you all day. I just got about maybe two pages out of six. And I feel like I feel like God, I don't want to rush and I don't I don't I feel like God wants to 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 just continue to bless us and tell us some things. So I'm gonna finish this next week. And I feel like that's a good note to, to stop on. That God has a plan. He has a plan. He has a plan. Let me say, let me end with this. God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. Even if the way he's leading us didn't seem to make much sense, maybe we feel like his timing is off, we can still trust him. Because he knows our way. He sees the big picture. He has our good in mind. And though it may not have been what we have chosen or the way we think it should be, we can thank him that he is sovereign. His care of us, his leadership. God led them to the Red Sea. Moses did not take a long turn. Y'all with me? Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. Come on, Lord, help me out. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. Higher than your ways. And my thoughts higher than your thoughts. You know, we may not see a pillar of fire or a pillar of cloud. But we have his word. We have his Holy Spirit to give us guidance. He is with us. He gives us wisdom. He provides direction. So we never have to fear being left on our own to figure things out. He goes ahead of us. He walks with us. He guards behind us. His word gives us truth in life and shows us the way to walk in this world. Now you understand that the children of Israel, Moses' word was leading them. He was their leader. But God was truly leading them. That in the day, God said, when the cloud moves, you move. When the cloud stops, you stop. At night, there was a pillar of fire. And the pillar of fire, if, if, it, if it moves, you move. If it stops, you stop. The pillar of fire was also for light, protection, warmth, all of these things that God provided. Now we, again, we may not go out and a pillar of cloud may not lead us to our homes. At night, a pillar of fire may not lead us where we need to go. May not have led us to church this morning. But we have this. We have this. This leads us and guides us and helps us. But not only do we have this, we have this. 
The Holy Spirit that dwells in us. Do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? That He dwells in us, each and every one of us. So the Holy Spirit leads and guides us. The, this Word leads and guides us. This is our fire. This is our cloud. This is our fire. This is our cloud. But we have to be obedient. Moses then said, okay, the fire's going that way, but I think I'll go that way. The fire went that way, he went that way. If the fire stopped or the cloud stopped, he stopped. Come on. I know, I know how we are. The fire and the cloud stops. We want to keep on going because we want to get there. But God might say, you're not ready yet. Stop. Stop. We're going to get there. We're going to get there in that message next week. Where he says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes we may have to stand still. Just stand still. The word tells us sometimes we have to stand still to see the salvation of the Lord, to see Him work. Because the Lord fights our battles. Amen? Stand with me. We'll finish this up next week. Let's y'all have a bottom of the hour or so. Right? Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for your work this morning. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for freedom. I thank you, Lord, that we are free in you, that we can walk and we can live in your spirit in total freedom, that we are no longer a slave to sin, but we are free, that we are your children, your sons and your daughters of the kingdom. We're a joint heirs with Christ. Lord, I thank you for your promises. I thank you, Lord, that you lead us and you guide us. Lord, I'm thankful that we don't have to go back, but we can go forward in you. Father, I'm thankful for your word this morning. I'm thankful for your promises this morning. Lord, I pray for your people this morning. I pray, God, that you would touch us, help us, strengthen us. Every area of our life, God, that you would lead us and guide us, be with us. Lord, that your word would be a lamp to our feet. Lord, that your word would be hidden in our heart that we might not sin against you. That your Holy Spirit, Lord, would just touch us and help us in, in everything we do. Father, we love you this morning. We praise you. Lord, I pray for your people. I pray that you challenge us. Lord God, that you challenge us and encourage us this morning. Lord, maybe there's one here this morning that they, they, they're they just on that 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 fence, Lord. Maybe the devil is enticing them. Maybe the, he's enticing them with the pleasurable. Maybe he's enticing them with the shiny. But Father, I pray, Lord, for the strength to resist the devil. He must flee. Lord, to draw near to you, you will draw near to us. Father, help us, Lord, to, to move forward in you. Not backwards, but to move forward. Reaching forward to the things that are ahead. Not turning back and not looking back. Father, we love you this morning. We praise you this morning. Lord, as we leave this place, God, I pray for your anointing. I pray for your many blessings, your favor upon our lives. Lord, I pray for your protection. Lord, I pray again for those that are, are sick or those that have loved ones that are sick. I pray, Lord, that you would heal and touch and protect. Father, we praise you. We thank you. We pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to move in our lives, to move in our church. Father, that we would be a lighthouse that shines brightly in the darkness of our community. Help us, Lord, to be your hands and your feet. Father, we praise you. We thank you. Lord, we thank you for who you are and what you've done for us. For your precious blood that you paid the price for each and every one of us to be free. Thank you, Lord, for that. That came for stamp that's upon our hearts this morning. Father, we love you. We pray for you. All that you do, all that you do. Go with us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
God bless you all. We love you. Come back next week for part two. We love you all.